you. You are totally awesome. Welcome to your Totally Awesome, a podcast devoted to catching up with some of the amazing people yeah. around us and finding out what they've been up to lately. My name's Aaron, and today we're joined by a, uh, an accomplished uh, musical theater lyricist and uh, and very talented musician, Mark Sonnenblick. Mark, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, Aaron. I'm super excited to be here. <laughs> I'm super excited uh, to have you here. Thanks for having me. Of course, of course. Um, so, Mark, you've had an, uh, an extremely busy summer here, um, I, I have to imagine. Uh, Mark just wrote um, all the lyrics for a, a play or a musical that, um, that, is in, that is playing in New York right now, Mark, uh, and it's called Independence? Yeah, it's called uh, Independence. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Uh, the, well, the plot is, <clears throat> uh, it basically is about these, like, a group of kids in, like, their early 20s, um, and, uh, they live on this revolutionary war ship, um, but they're, they, like, live modern day, and they pretend to be a re- reenactment ship, doing historical reenactment, but they've really been smuggling marijuana from Nova Scotia into Boston, uh, but at the top of the show, their captain and the guy who's like the drug contact for them disappears. So they have to figure something else out, and they decide to try and do reenactment for real, even though they don't uh, they don't know how to do that. So that's kind of that's the, the premise there. Got adventures, it. yeah. Got it. Um, and uh, something as unique as this kind of storyline, I had to ask, um, how did who came up with this? Uh, well, it's a it's a to- it's a totally original story. I, I wrote the lyrics for it, um, and then uh, this girl named Marina Keegan wrote the script, and then Stephen Feigenbaum um, wrote uh, the music for it. So it's like collaborative between the three of us. And the idea started with Marina, who uh, basically just had a bunch of different ideas for for musicals, but grew up in Boston, um, and she uh, uh, grew up. Seen these tall ships, reenactment ships, visited them. I think kind of the image that attracted, or the juxtaposition that was sort of attracted to us and wanting to do this show is these kind of, not that this is the case with real reenactment ships at all, but like in the show, kind of these slackers, uh, people without much direction or motivation, uh, reenacting a war in which there were people who were like 14 people their age, or much younger even, who are fighting for their country and dying. And I think that 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 image is kind of what what sparked this um, uh, this show initially. And this like she kind of just developed the story from there. Uh, She and I talked a bunch about it last summer and kind of decided characters and plot and all that stuff. Uh, How did you guys end up being in New York? Because I I remember you saying it was... Uh, you guys started in Yale, so at Yale, where you guys went to school, and that's kind of how the production went up. Well, so, yeah, so the first production was at Yale uh, this past December, um, and then after that, we applied to the Fringe Fe- the New York Fringe Festival, which is a big theater festival that something like, I think there were 187 shows this year or something. They give you the space, they give you times, and so we were really lucky to be a part of it. Found out we got in, and uh, so... Come August, this is, uh, it went up this past August, and then, as in last month. It, it feels, like, it feels like a while ago, right? It feels like a while ago. It feels ago. like a long time ago, right? Yeah. Uh, but then uh, it, it got picked, um, we got some really good reviews, we sold out all our shows, and so it was, uh, it got extended along with a couple of other shows from the Fringe um, at an off-Broadway theater for the next couple of weeks, so we're there until uh, That's so cool. September That's so 21st, cool. yeah. And um, and nice, has it? Cool. And so it's been in existence, I guess. Well, you guys started probably writing it what, last summer, then. Uh, yeah. Well, we basically solidified the idea um, at the end of uh, the school year, 2011. So like April, May, 2011, and then uh, over the that was summer, the idea for like the plot was set. Well, the not even the plot. The idea for oh, it's going to be about kids on a ship and okay. they. They're going to play, like, kind of folk music. They're kind of drunk and get out of guitar and sing. Um, and uh, then over the summer, Marina basically uh, worked on writing Act One. Um, okay. And then we came back to school. We started writing songs for Act One. She started writing Act Two. 
This is the three of you guys. We right? edited, we revised, yeah, yeah, okay. and then uh, so yeah, it's been about a year and a half now. Um, wow, that's a long time to be with the project. Knowing you too, you like uh, jumping around a little bit. Yeah, although for a musical, a musical, I mean, any, you know, all these. Not that this is going to Broadway, but a bunch of shows that are on, like, any show going to Broadway is, like, eight years, ten years in development. Like, Jeez. these things take forever. Okay, well, so then... you can't make any money in musical <laughs> theater. That's year and why. a half. I mean, you're selling tickets, right? Yeah, we're, yeah, yeah, but that, that almost covers, uh, like, a third less of our, like, operating costs. Okay, so right. we have stuff like Kickstarters and things. That's but this right. is so, also the circumstances for this show, um, and like going to the Fringe and go like you can't really make money off of the, off right. of these things. This is more do it, let people come see it. Maybe they're interested in either paying you to do something else or uh, taking this to a place where you might actually get some reimbursement, huh. uh, which would be like a a longer run at a bigger theater. Um, or ultimately licensing. I mean, give a producer come on board. Producers are looking to like make an investment. They know that won't be kind of recaptured right away. They might have to wait years in order to see a return. But that's why they're so nice and they support artists. Well, but honestly, like the biggest producer was we had a big Kickstarter campaign, um, right? Right. That raised like fourteen thousand dollars. Yeah, we'll throw that up there on the post so everyone can uh, make sure and check it out. So how how is the? I have to imagine it hasn't been static since you guys first created or threw it up in um, at Yale in December, right? Um, has so have you guys gotten like new cast members and everything for New York, or is it new songs? Is it yeah the same songs? Uh, a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, it's not one or the other. There are some of the same songs. Also, there are new songs. And same with the cat. Well, there's one person who's the same from the Yale cast. Uh, but we also had open auditions in New York. Um, and uh, we hired a casting director. So all this is very new to me. I have never... That's not, I've like helped out with some more professional shows, but I've never actually like been as integral a part of a show, especially one that I've uh, helped write. Um, as this one, so it's a lot of new things. Hired a casting director, they come in and they get you really awesome people who will audition for you and uh, producers and all and all this kind of stuff. So it's been it's been cool. And there's been since the Yale production, we've made a bunch of changes, cut songs, added songs, changed the story. So sure. Um, so then I, I know that I have to ask because the, the circumstances are a bit unique with your with your musical. Um, so you're. The per, so Marina, I, I don't know, maybe you can explain, um, the, the writer had uh, had passed away in a, an unfortunate car accident. Um, yeah. So I, I don't know where to speak there, but um, I guess on top of that, how does how does that come into, you know, the iterative process of writing and rewriting and et cetera when the primary writer is no longer there? Yeah, so it was um, uh, basically right after uh, we graduated, um, uh like the the same week, uh, Marina um, was in a car crash. I was killed in a car crash, and so uh, almost. I mean, almost the first thing that her parents said to me and Stephen basically was, "You guys need to still do this show." Um, and I think that we were very much on the same page because it was something that Marina cared a lot about. I was very excited to have it happening at the Fringe, um, but. There was this, uh, it's complicated because Marina, the, the show had definitely been developed by all of us, and like Marina and I had spent the summer talking through the plot, um, but ultimately she was the one who was writing the dialogue, just like right. ultimately I was the one writing the lyrics and Stephen was the one writing the music. Um, so we kind of faced this problem where there were a bunch of stuff we wanted to change from the first show not the least of which was for the fringe it needed to be two hours. The initial show was like two hours and 45 minutes or something, just a very long show. Um, so we knew we had to cut a lot of material, but also there were a lot of problems with the first show we wanted to fix and change and obviously adding songs, cutting songs out. Right. And with all of that, the script needs to be 
altered pretty significantly. Um, even if you're taking 10 lines and uh, cutting out 5 lines, oftentimes that means you need to get the information from those 10 lines into the 5 lines. You can't just cut lines. You have to modify and you have to tighten. You have to move things around. So um, we are kind of fa faced with the issue of not having the person who was doing that um, on And it sounded like she had the most experience with the with the actual topic as well, because she was the one that was uh, involved with, I mean, she's the one that came up with the idea, I guess, of, um, yeah. of the revolutionary Yeah, although, and, I mean, the, as, the the background is really more a frame. Like, I, I, th I think, well, I guess it, it was nice that we felt fairly confident, um, and uh, I felt fairly confident as someone who ultimately had to go in and, and um, do the right tangibly thing. make a lot of the changes right. in that... Uh, like, Marina and I had worked very closely together, um, as was Steven, but especially Marina and I, because we were both writing the words, we had to make sure that those lined up and the ideas lined up and that kind of right. stuff. Um, so we had very extensive conversations about all, basically, like we were at a party and whenever other people sort of left the room, we would inevitably start talking about the show. But feeling very confident in terms of what, like, our ideas were for the show, and uh, in this world and who these characters are, um, feeling good about, okay, here are the changes that we knew we all wanted to make, including Marina. Um, there were things like, oh, this plot point doesn't make sense, or, oh, this character needs to do this, or this song needs to do this. So feeling good about what these changes were and uh, less clear exactly necessarily, like, how to necessarily implement them. Okay. Um, so th that's where kind of the decision making happened, and uh, it was just it wasn't an easy process. But believing very firmly that what she would have wanted for the show was for it to be as good as possible, right. um, as entertaining right. as possible, and achieve and communicate the ideas as clearly and effectively as possible, um, which necessarily meant a lot of tightening and rewriting and something that that's something that we'll keep doing if the show continues Continue so we absolutely need to keep doing because this is like draft two so i i also want to ask because i'm completely unfamiliar with kind of the writing process of a musical in, in particular um because yeah. it's it's interesting to think that the person writing the the lyrics to the music aren't necessarily the same isn't necessarily the same person that's writing the actual script um what was writing what was writing the lyrics of a musical like um, it was, uh, it was great. So I'd, I'd done it for, for, um, a bunch of other things. Um, and it's always a little bit different. It's a show that, um, I wrote, um, that, like in... Wicked? Was know, it Wicked? Yeah. Yes, it was Wicked. Was it, Have you heard of Wicked? 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 Fingers crossed that yeah. it's going to take off. I, um, maybe. A little while ago that was about, it was about, like, internet trolling. And, uh, the music in that was sort of very surreal and... Like, helps. It was more like the internet world has the music, and the way that that flows through is helping establish kind of a contrast between when people are online and offline. And that was a certain goal. Whereas here, um, the kind of interesting thing, or the interesting thing for me, was uh, these are kids on a ship who are sort of singing. Like, it's, I mean, the sort of musical feel is very much folk. Uh, there's not a piano in the band. The, the, the band is like guitar, drums, okay. fiddle, uh, upright bass, accordion. Uh, it's very much sort of folk, alt folk. Um, right. Type of music I like, uh, def yeah, definitely a genre um, I like a lot. And I think one exciting thing too is, or a big thing to think about with musical theater or something I think about um, is that musical theater used to be the like the popular songs of the time sure. back in the 30s, 40s, 50s, whatever, like, song would be on Broadway and would also be playing on the radio. It'd, all, it'd be what people really listen to. And that's not really the case anymore. Uh, everyone sort of has to face this question of, okay, how we, you want mu uh, musicals that really speak to people and connect with them. And also, like, have music that people probably want to listen to, but no one, like, a lot of people do, but the vast majority of people don't switch on uh, wicked when they w are like jamming on the car drive. They're not going to win any music requests contests against that, like Drake or um, 
the Wayne or those guys. Yeah. Yeah. He's good, right? He plays music, I think. Right. Yeah. Uh, um, but but yeah, this this that that kind of tension. So I think something a couple of things excited me about this show. One was okay, so they're getting together, they're singing on deck, so music's a part of this world because these are people who connect with each other through music. Um, and that's what brings this community together. They like get drunk they get high and they sit on deck and they take out the guitar and like sing harmonies. Um, and they love kind of the old folk traditions. And so this was an exciting opportunity to write a lot of different kinds of songs. Um, there are like old sea shanties that was a lot of fun to go on and just look at all these old, um, songs of the sea, like work songs. What's Cause sailors sung all the time on these big right. tall ships when they were sailing around singing was a huge part of it. Um, I actually mainly just looked up lyrics. So I, I, I some of them I would listen to, um, but uh, there's some YouTubes. There's these great YouTube videos of these old, uh, kind of these old guys, like in a fishing village in some random place, like with dish pan. I don't know. It's great. Um, well, I also we'll got, see if we can find some of those. I also, I don't know if people out there know Stan Rogers at all. He was a guy I discovered doing this, and he's unbelievable. I highly, he's a Canadian uh, singer, songwriter, who just, who writes these incredible uh, folk ballads and songs. Um, anyway, but he was a big inspiration. But it was exciting to write a bunch of sea shanties, um, but also to write a bunch of songs that potentially could be sort of just, like, folk songs that, I, I, like, ideally these kids would be listening to and would like listening to as the popular music that they loved, as well as more musical theatery songs that also move the show forward. But figuring out ways to balance that and ground that, um, as well as this challenge of you listen to pop songs, and it's a lot about sound, it's a lot about um, choruses, it's about single ideas. They're not the most dynamic songs in terms of information progression. A lot of times songs are dramatic in terms of sound progression or like it's building, it's building, it's building somewhere. But in terms of what you're listening to, um, not always so much lyrically and in musical theater, lyrics are huge. It's why part of why I like it because lyrics are telling the story. If you can't hear the lyrics, then it's frustrating. Um, a lot of times when you're in right. an audience. So figuring out how to take these songs that, um, didn't necessarily need to be like singing, like, Aaron, don't leave me, Aaron, where are you going, Aaron, nom, but were songs that could be a little bit more abstract and a little bit more um, folky and poppy, but also somehow move the action forward, so trying to devise situations and circumstances and dialogue that frame the songs so that they, they, move, they move stuff even as they can also maybe be a song that, like, could stand alone as just a song you want to listen to. Right. Um, well, so so this is a completely different kind of music than um, you're used to writing, because, so Mark's all, he was in a band in college, and now you are pursuing that, correct, Mark? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm moving to uh, Denver, Colorado. Um, me and uh, the guitarist from my band in uh, college. Okay. We're moving to Colorado, and we want to just get a house that we can turn into kind of a practice space. It's sort of exciting, but I, I yeah, I don't really know. I don't know what it's going to be like, um, but that's part of kind of why I'm excited. Uh, I feel like if there's a time to take risks and, and fail uh, terribly, it's right now. I don't have any kind of obligations or responsibilities, and... I uh, can just decide to do something completely different. Um, so. Anyways, we uh, we appreciate a lot, Mark, um, and we have a lot of things to promo for you. Hopefully, uh, you, you're still your play is still going on right now, or your musical is still going on. It's Tuesday, Friday. It's the next okay, two, Tuesday, Tuesday Friday. and Friday. So, if you know people in New York who have uh, tickets are eighteen bucks, which is not very expensive for theater, and uh, you'll get. Two hours of I think some some really cool Mark Sonnenblitz music. music. That's it's not a never a bad thing. Um, I'm in fact going to be flying out to New York to go watch Mark's music. I, everyone who can actually make it out there, definitely go check it out. We'll throw a link up on the uh, on the post here, and um, and also just you know go check out the, the musical's website and.
also incredible reviews that have been going up left and right. Um, there's even an interview with Mark somewhere on the interwebs, so you should discover that and or find that and read it. Yeah, you should you should read that. You should read that interview. That you'll get a good picture of Mark's on of like part. Um, anyways, thanks for coming on. As always, Mark. Yeah. Uh, enjoy thanks so much your, for having uh, me. No, of course. Enjoy your uh, the rest of your summer, and I'll see you in a couple weeks when I go out there to, to go watch your musical. Sound good? Yeah. All right. Cool. We'll see All you right. later.